Hello students, this is Mr. B. Those of you that have watched some of my son's videos, these are the arms that you see popping in on the sides of the videos when he's doing the experiments. Um, we do have more experiments coming. Um, he's right now on summer vacation up in Georgia, but when he gets back, we'll put him to work and let him show you some cool little things that you can do at home if you want to try to learn about science. Today, we are going to explore how to use a double beam equal arm balance. But we're just going to call it a double beam balance. Notice that I did not call this a balance scale. I did that because it's not a balance scale. A scale determines your weight, and your weight is a measurement of how gravity affects your mass. On this balance, we are just going to measure the mass of two objects. That's why we're not calling it a balance scale. First thing we have to do when we go to use a um, double beam balance is we want to make sure that it is zeroed. By that, we want to make sure that this little pointer is lined up on the black line. Okay. To do that, we have to make sure that the two beams, this lower beam and this top upper beam, are both on zero. This bottom beam it moves in increments of 10 and you can hear it click as you move to different increments okay we want to make sure that zero is in the center of the window since we're trying to zero the balance this top beam we want to make sure that it is also pointing on zero and this is where the patience factor comes in once this pointer stops moving, hopefully it's lined up with the little black line behind it. See this little white piece with the black line? We want that line and the pointer to line up with each other. If by some chance they don't line up with each other, ask your teacher to turn this little silver knob over here because you have to turn it just a little bit and wait for this pointer to stop moving. And most kids turn it too fast and too quickly and don't give the pointer a chance to catch up. So if it doesn't line up when you move the two beams to the left and put them on zero, ask your teacher to turn this little knob right here that I'm pointing to. It looks like it's zeroed. So we're going to measure two household objects today. We're going to measure the mass of a cell phone. And we're going to measure the mass of, you guys know what this is, PSP. Let's start with the PSP. You guys are probably more excited about that. PSP. So we're going to put the PSP on the left platform. Notice how the platforms changed, okay? Now we need to move these beams to determine the mass of the PSP. So I'm going to just move it to, say, 100. Notice we have no change. That means that this PSP has a mass of more than 100 grams. Let's move it to 150. This platform still hasn't moved up yet, so we need to keep moving it until we see this platform rise a little bit. Move it all the way to 200 grams, and now, see how the platform's starting to rise? See how our needle, our pointer is starting to move? We're getting close to the actual mass of this PSP. You're probably saying, what? we can't move this bottom one any further to the right. That's why we have the upper beam. We move the upper beam over, and I'm just going to move it to one gram, and see what happens. Now, see how the pointer's moved past the center line? We want this pointer to line up with the center line each time we measure the mass of something, because that will tell us the actual measurement. Since this pointer's past this line, I have to move this top beam a little bit to the left. So I'm going to move it a couple tenths, because this top beam measures from 0 to 10 grams. And each gram measurement is broken down into tenths. So each of these grams is broken into 10 parts. And right now, I'm waiting, it looks like we need to move it a little bit more to the left. So we'll move it another tenth of a gram. And this is where patience comes in. We have to wait for this to... Stop moving. Once the pointer 
stops moving it lines up on that black line and it looks like it's lined up so let's figure out how many grams this PSP <coughs> is it's 200 and this pointer is not on one gram so we have to count the tenths these little lines each line is one tenth of a gram so we have one two three four five it looks like six grams but not six grams six tenths of a gram so this PSP has a mass of two hundred and six tenths grams or two hundred point six okay now we'll go ahead and take the PSP off let's go ahead and put everything back to zero you should always do that before you start measuring a new object and we're going to measure the mass of the cell phone so put the cell phone on the left platform and let's slide this to 50 nothing slide this to 100 nothing slide it to 150 up oh, see movement once this platform starts rising that lets us know we're getting close let's move it to 180 whoops way too much 170 way too much because the platform is all the way up we want these to be balanced that's why they call this a balance scale or not a balance scale but they call it a balance to uh, 160 that doesn't work 150 okay 150 is not enough 160 is too much so we need to move it to 150 and do what that's right we need to move the top beam so let's move the top beam to about two grams and look the platforms are not balanced this left one is higher than the right so we need to get them balanced so let's move this back a little bit let's move it to one gram two grams was too much or remember we're watching the pointer up here we want it to line up on the black line when it lines up on the black line that means we're good and we can go ahead and count how many grams we have and we'll have an accurate measurement looks like it's just a little bit to the right so I need to move this ever so slightly to the left and there we have to wait and see if it lines up on the black line I think this might be it still moving just a little bit alright so now the pointers lined up on our little black line now we can count how many grams we have and we have right down here 150 on the bottom beam and on the top beam this little pointer is on one gram exactly so the mass of the cell phone is 151 grams 150 plus what we have on the top 150 plus 1 151 grams and that is how you use a double beam equal arm balance or double beam balance see ya